Cup will be beginning in just a few moments. As the contestants enter the room, we ask that you please make way for the Parade of Nations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth phase of the 2019 FTD World Cup will be beginning in just a few moments. As the contestants enter the room, we ask that you please make way for the Parade of Nations. Thank you. Please welcome the anchor from 6ABC News at 4 and host of FYI Philly, Alicia Vitarelli. And also, world traveling floral designer and the 2002 World Cup champion, Pear Benjamin. Hi everyone, welcome to the FTD World Cup. This is Task 4. It is the fourth phase of this international world-class competition. And I just have to say, hosting this in Philadelphia is such an honor. It has not been held in the United States since 1985. That was in Detroit. And right here at the Philadelphia Flower Show, the premier event for PHS. It is such an honor to have this competition here. 23 of the best floral designers from all across the globe. If you haven't had a chance to witness one of these competitions in person yet, if you're new to the floor today, this is basically the Olympics. This is the Oscars of floral design, and these designers are the top from across the globe. I mean, Alicia, you give it such beautiful description, and that's exactly what it is. The room is packed with talented floral designers, the best we have at the moment, and they have so far executed three different designs. They've done an architectural design, a hand-tied bouquet, and a dinner for two design. And now when they come in, they have, they're have they going to start on their fourth, which is a surprise task, and uh, that I will tell a little bit more about in a while. So for them, the first three they have prepared at home and then put together here, but the one they're doing now, they only got to know a couple of hours ago and have been able to prepare with their assistants for the two hours and now they're outside of the hall nervously waiting. So this is a surprise package. This is something they're just walking into today. Every single designer got the same package, but I am sure we will see 23 completely different variations. That is totally correct, Alicia. And I will, I will grab you on that word surprise 
because as many of you in the room might know, we've had a more unpleasant surprise. We had one design from Hans from Netherlands. It's actually collapsed and fell down half an hour ago that you see behind here. But to the comfort of everyone, including Hans, the first three criteria of the design were judged before. So he's going to keep all those points. And then they also, the jury, they judged the technique, which will be a bit lower then. But he's still in the fight. He still had the chance to be part of the semifinals. And he is eager to start his next assignment. And by the way, it is Hans. It is his birthday today. Yeah. So, so if you pass by his pod in the Netherlands, give him a round of applause, yeah. cheer him on, because it's, and also say happy birthday. We sang to him earlier today, uh, so yeah. he could use a little boost. Yeah, really, boost Hans, and of course boost everyone. Oh, but he boost needs everyone. a little bit extra, he does. And I, they really do feed from the crowd. If you have not had a chance to witness this, it is essentially live theater. This 90 minute competition will unfold. You will watch it from beginning to end. It's dazzling. A, a yeah. woman earlier des described it like this. She said, "It's I'm levitating. Yeah. I'm, I'm levitating. I'm trying, but I it, can't. It's, it's so beautiful. It's like watching yeah. a ballet. Yeah. So go around, have a look in all the pots for the designs. And with the design from Hans, he and his assistants is going to put it up after this competition. So it's going to stand there beautifully to be looked at from tomorrow again. So this is their fourth task. Yeah. Right now there are 23 global competitors. I described it earlier as uh, th this is the creme de la creme in terms of the floral design world. These are the the Tom Fords, these are the Karl Lagerfelds. These are the names that are so famous all across the globe and we're hosting them here. But tonight, there'll be only 10 left to compete. Exactly, later tonight, I will have the honor then to present the 10 semi-finalists that will be competing here tomorrow morning. And I think we're gonna have time for our procession. This is one of the most magnificent parts. Again, because it is like the Olympics, we will have our parade of champions. Yeah. So if you'll clear the way, they're going to be coming right around the stage. They're gonna way. come from outside there and up this line here. So do give way once they're on their way into the room. And make sure you give them some good energy. And give them lots of warm applause because they need that and yes. they're worth it. Andres Australia with Bart Hassan as the competitor. There we see him. And then from Canada we see Paul Jaras. And then we have China with Yao Wei. And we have Chinese Taipei with Kelvin Lee. We have Czech Republic with Primish Hittish. We got Denmark with Christina Goodixen. And here we see from Finland, Pirjo Kopi. And we have from France, Hervé Fressal. Yeah, give them a warm, warm, warm hand. And from Germany, we got Stefan Twiebe. And after that, from Hong Kong, Solomon Leong. And we have from Hungary, Tamás Messifi. And we have from Italy, Vincenzo Antonuccio, and from Japan, Kasuhiro Sugimoto, and coming along there we have from Korea, Omien. And from Mexico, Leopoldo Gomez. And we have the birthday boy from the Netherlands, Hans Silstra. And from Norway, Elin Havreberg. From Russia, Natalia Sisko. And from Spain, Lina Rush. And from Sweden, Sophie Danielson, sir. From the United Kingdom, we have Laura Leong. And then from your own home country, from the United States, Katerina Stewart. 
And then, last but not least, Nam Bao from Vietnam. Give them all a warm hand. And holding the flags are their assistants, who are essentially their right hands. Yeah, they've been with them on this long journey of half a year of preparation and their support, both in the craft and I think a lot of mental support as well. It is so wonderful to see how this convention floor has filled in here at the Philadelphia Flower Show. This is one of the premier events for PHS. You should all know that with each ticket purchased today, you are helping the Horticultural Society here do amazing work, helping grow food, have access to, to nature and incredible programs. So a round of applause for all of you for taking part in this and for the competition we are about to witness. Yeah, the fourth task of the FTD World Cup 2019, where we on Sunday evening will crown the new world champion. So I'm very excited about this surprise package. Tell us a little bit about the task. Yeah. What they're going to do now, they have 90 minutes and the, the surprise package, which is the designer's choice, they have all received the same material, both botanicals and, and uh, artificials and containers and everything. So they can use as much or as little from it as possible. It's all their choice. And it is... Okay. And before I tell even more, I know what these competitors want to do. They, they want to get go started? to their pods. Okay. So competitors, <laughs> you can go to your pods, get in, well, starting position, but not start. And the assistants, you know, you follow, put down the flag, and then sadly you leave us for a part because the assistants are not allowed to be in the room while the competitors are competing. Okay, no, I do this. back to this task. It is the, oh yes, a round of applause for the assistants too as they make their way out because this is all about the competitors with no assist. Exactly. So this is the certified American grown flowers surprise package and these flowers are all homegrown right here exactly. in the United States. So, so the competitors might come from around the world but these are American flowers from farms big and small all across the US. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and as I was saying before, the theme is spring. I have a little quote here from Roy Bean. Time will pass and seasons will come and go. Oh. And spring is the beginnings and growth. As the ground begins to fall, spring flowers emerge from their winter rest to start a new cycle of life. Their blooms remind us that time marches on. Huh. And this in this, is deep. yeah, it is profound. And in this task, the designers are challenged to use all the gorgeous certified American grown fresh products okay. to demonstrate the cycle of life through spring's blooms. Mm. And once again, we have 70% of the final expression being botanical. So time mm. will pass and seasons will come and go. Yes. And sometimes I think they just pass too fast. Or, in our case, our winter is taking way too long. So if spring could show up at any point, I think we'd all be so happy. But it is spring in here. We keep saying this is the most beautiful place to be in Philadelphia right now, no doubt. And you are about to witness some really magnificent displays of artistry. Yeah, no, it's, it's pure magic. If you were if you were taking pictures, use the hashtag FTD World Cup. We'd love to see the pictures you're taking. There's no viewer's choice, but show us your favorites. Yeah, and of course we love them all. <laughs> yes, we do. But there are six official members of the jury team who will be judging this competition, and they have a tough task. They have a very tough and important task, and. Uh, I mean, they have been walking around, they're going to be walking around on the floor judging while the designers are working. So that they, they have a tough time. But I, we spoke to one of the judges earlier today and he said it's a wonderful task to perform as well, but with a lot of responsibility on the shoulders. You see the jury members up on the, on the screens now? Yes. Yeah. And um, what we also have out on the floor is the technical committee, another six persons and they are the ones checking so the competitors stay within the rules when it comes to measurements way of working and keeping on time not working after we have stopped it a lot of those things so these 12 people important people in the room 
Just so you all know, Pear and I will be making our way through the different pods, starting here with Mexico, going to all 23, stopping at Italy. And Pear has really incredible commentary because, again, he is the 2002 FTD World Cup champion and also um, a globally renowned floral designer. So Yeah, and we have several world, world champions walking down on this floor. And um, we're all looking forward to who the new will be. And we have European champions. Yes. We've got Asia Cup champions. So great. And a lot of, of course, they've all won their country before that. So, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it's amazing to see what they do. And it's just true talent. And we just want to welcome all of you here to the Philadelphia Flower Show, especially our friends from across the globe, because each of these competitors has a group of supporters, friends, family, the fan club. And so we welcome you not only to this premier event, but we also welcome you to our city of Philadelphia. And we hope you enjoy it while you're here. Quick thanks to our premier sponsors, Smithers Oasis, for all of their support, because without them, this would not be possible. No, and, and that's the thing with the floral industry. From all parts, we come together, create an event like this, and this is what just drives our profession forward. And we're gonna see when we walk around, we're gonna see so many new things, and you're gonna be mesmerized by what they do, because it's not anything like what you find at a normal flower shop. Oh, absolutely. And I think, too, what you have to understand about what we're seeing is that these designs from this cream of the crop team and of uh, floral designers from all around the world, all these competitors, will set the stage for trends for 2019 and, and forward because the entire world is watching to see what they're going to come up with. Yeah, and for all of you in the audience, I mean, go around and just be mesmerized by the flowers because you will see flowers, varieties, colors that you never have seen because these designers have searched flowers all over the globe that they have had then shipped into this special occasion. And if you're like me and you want to know what which kind of flower we're looking at, we just ask Pear because he has all of the answers. He is the oh. expert. <laughs> yeah, well, hang on. And if you all in the audience can help us, we need your help for a countdown to start the competitors. We go from 10 to one. Will you help us? Yeah, that's okay. good. How, because we want a really loud countdown. Loud and proud. We have to take the whole hall so we get the attention from everyone in here. And we go from now then, 10, 10, 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go, competitors, you can start. I just need it turned up. So, Alicia, we're going to make our way up to Leopoldo from Mexico. Mexico, for the first time in history, taking part in the FTD World Cup. And we have a so very... So, welcome, welcome, yeah, Leopoldo. Yeah, give Leopoldo a warm hand. The very first competitor from Mexico in this world-class competition. Mm. So, these are the flowers that they're working with right here. Yeah, I think wherever you are in the room, you will see in front of the competitors, you will see buckets with flowers, boxes with materials, and those were all the materials they were provided with before prep time here earlier. So what do we see here? These are all certified American-grown flowers. Exactly. We don't have anything that's not grown within the country, and I think that's, that's a very good thing. And we can see we, tulips. Have, we have a good variation of everything from snapdragons, lilies, tulips, anemones, roses, gerbras, 
uh, different proteas, so they'll argue a lot of foliage. So they have been given a good selection of materials for this task. Now, in terms of the structure, does each designer have the same structure to work upon? No, they were allowed to prepare the structure together with their assistants in the prep time. So it's going to look very different from pod to pod. Let's talk a little bit about Leopoldo so that the audience can get a chance to know him and some of his accreditation. He runs a very prestigious academy, a floral academy, if you will, yeah. in Mexico, Centro de Arte Floral, and some of his students are here. Yeah, we and, hear and them. some of his colleagues. <laughs> yeah. And the ones with the whistle. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they should be loud now to support him. Last year, he won. He was the grand prize winner of Gateway to the America's Cup competition. And he's competed also before. So he's a very motivated, focused designer we have here. And he's explained his designs with a few words. He, he wants to be true to nature, but he wants to bring in all the Mexican traditions, especially with the with the colors and those, but giving it a modern translation. Yeah, Mexico City, he says, from the ultra-modern architecture and beautifully preserved historical landmarks has provided him just by living there with a very unique setting. So he draws inspiration from his hometown, from his home country, and he describes his work as introspective. So the essence of nature can be perceived and intrinsic treasures can be discovered. That's so lovely. Doesn't that sound lovely? Yeah. I think we leave Leopoldo So Leopoldo there. will be back to check in. And we will go to our birthday boy Hans from the Netherlands. And we just make a little bit away. Can we have a little pause here? That's good. And Hans, he's getting started here. He's actually grabbed all the foliage to start at the base. Okay. So it's so interesting. They all start differently. They use different parts of the props that have been given. So we're going to see a vast range of different designs when we walk through here now, Alicia. Yes, absolutely. And so they had a chance to do a little prep work ahead of time to see which materials they're working with and then also to have a vision of where they want to take it. But again, not the same six month prep period they had for the other structures that they worked on. This surprise package has almost like an iron chef component. Yeah, but here it. we're testing their instant creativity, yes. how they can act in the moment. That's wonderful. Hans, yeah. we should tell you, by the way, is our birthday boy today, a Dutch florist who inherited his business from his parents who are here with us. We, we had a chance to chat with them earlier. He began competing back in 1993 and won his very first competition. So he has spent his time traveling around the world, getting inspiration for his ideas. And he strives to show passion, emotion, and feeling in his arrangements. And we have here, ladies and gentlemen, a very mentally strong designer. So give him a warm applause. Do that. Cheer him up. Go, go, Han. Go, Han. Yeah. And we'll be back to check on that display on our second loop around. Yeah. And we're coming to Australia. Australia's Bart Hassam. And see here, we've oh. got yet again a total different start. Yes. It's incredible to see what each designer, what each artist creates with the same box of materials it's it's fantastic and imagine alicia we've just seen the this is the third one i mean and every single one is going to be different and bart i mean bart he is a very successful designer he's been he's won and becoming the flora florist of the year in australia five times he also won the asia cup in 2011 he runs together with a partner he runs his own flower shop in Brisbane, where he's from, Maison Fleur Floral Design. And he lives design-wise somewhere in between Japan and Australia. Yes, I, I can see that. And I think a lot of people are, are gaining inspiration even just for their, their own lives by walking around and seeing what these designers are putting forward. Bart created his first wedding bouquet for a family wedding at the age of 13. So we're seeing a lot of these designers inspired at a young age and continue to pursue this passion and make a career out of it and not just any career an extremely highly acclaimed one as they now compete for this global championship this 2019 
FTD World Cup. Curious to see how this is all going to pan out. I'm I know so this excited. Is looking Isn't this looking beautiful, everyone? Look, yeah, yeah, look at him, he's smiling. Ah, huh? good. Go there, Bart. And we'll I, come back I, I in a minute. I keep saying it's it's so incredible to see the competitors so calm, yeah. and and it, and so peaceful. It's a very zen experience to watch this competition. Yeah. They may be clocking the time in their head. They may be stressed. We don't. We wouldn't know it for for a moment because they're just so composed. Yeah. No, I think they are. Hopefully, they go into their own little bubble of creativity. Well, you would know. That. You've, you've yeah, been I know here. You've been on that works. side. Yeah. Oh, see, here we got the cheering for, her, for Hong Kong. We, we got Dr. Solomon Leong, and see here, he has another Springfield. Okay, so yeah. they had this box of materials. They could also add their own, or no? No, no, no they all have exactly the same. Exactly They're not the allowed same. to add anything onto oh, it. Oh, so everybody has these pink sticks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They just differently choose what they okay. want to use or not. I understand. Oh, mm. and just, but structurally, they can take it how it, wherever they want to go yeah okay. because they've gotten a vast range of materials That's now I know that uh, dr. Leong has a, a fan club who came with him so we're gonna talk to them in a moment they wanted to say hello to everybody but just uh, he has countless awards a little bit about dr. oh yeah well, well you know when we were going through his bio he has be, received both gold and silver medals for the Chelsea Flower Show more than 15 times. The same with the Hong Kong Flower Show. He has exhibited a lot, he's competed a lot. And then on an everyday basis, he works with Solomon Blumen in, in Hong Kong. And you have some insight on that. Yeah, this is that. wonderful. He, he, a cosmopolitan bride, Beijing, named him one of the 50 influential Chinese voices in the wedding world. He is a doctor of philosophy in cultural studies, and you can see how each designer taps into their, their various educational backgrounds, oh, I know. I, because they said there's here. math and science here, there's, there's architecture. Yeah. This is not just design. He's already had a vision for this. It's design, it's science and art at the same time. So his philosophy, which I think is so beautiful, flowers are not a luxury, but a necessity to fully appreciate life and all the joys that flowers can bring. Some people, I think, in the room will agree, we think flowers are a splurge. Sometimes we only get them for special occasions. What, do you, what did you call them? A splurge. It's splurge? A splurge. What's that? Like we spent, it's something that we only spend extra money on, it's like extra. No, right. no, it's a necessity right. in life. It's not a spl spl a splurge. splurge. <laughs> no flowers, they are a necessity in life. It sounds so much better life. when I say it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's I'm go. so happy I could teach you a new word. Splurge. Hello, by the way, to all of Dr. Leo. <laughs> hi, hello. hi. Where are you guys from? Hong Kong. And how does it feel to be here cheering him on in our great Over city of Philadelphia? Overexcited. Exciting. Yeah, good. How beautiful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. So he is performing his best. Oh, oh that's, that's good so to, nice hear. to hear. So keep on oh, hearing him. It is good to have good friends and family. That is the very best. A splurge, a luxury. A splurge. Splurge. Sounds like, yeah, I wouldn't say what I think You know, it if you were like. to go shopping and say, okay, we need bread, we need milk, we need eggs, we sometimes would pass by the flowers. And I need a splurge. <laughs> so, we, yes, a splurge. <laughs> so, Premish. From Czech Republic, and he see Alicia here. We see wow. it, it, it's like a basket growing out of the the container, and and have, we have to have a look inside here. See, ah, he has a totally different solution on the technique. Okay. If you look inside here, he has created a structure with branches to stabilize the basket, and now he's going to work all his stems down there so that's where the water source is going to be as okay. well so explain a little bit to the crowd uh, these designs have to have water sources because they're on display now so the, yeah, the not flowers only need have, to eat yeah not only have to stay fresh during the competition but they have to stay fresh for the remainder of the of the flower show which is another nine eight yes eight, eight, eight. Yeah. yes yeah and I think these pods are just going to be so magnificent once they're all complete because we have been watching them, kind of like watching a child grow, huh? What it is, I mean, it's fantastic. So we're going to head over to Paul from Canada.
This is Paul Jarris now from Canada. Oh, oh no. Building outward. Ah. This is looking beautiful. I mean, once again, we see where he comes from because, as we said before, he studied architectural technique and design and fashion and we see how he works architecturally he's created this really voluminous art shape design lovely paul began his floral career back in 1988 after studies in architectural technology fine art and clothing design and i think you can see that background certainly in play here yeah, definitely. And he's also, like them all, an experienced competitor. He, com he won his first competition, Teleflora Design Canada, in 1990. So he's been an active competitor for a long, long time. And last year, he won the Maple Leaf Cup, and he also attended the Gateway to the Americas Cup. So he's well qualified to be here on the floor of the FTD World Cup. Beautiful. And we're passing further on to Norway. Yeah, it's fascinating now. You see when the tables are all done as well. Yes. And see what, what Ellen is doing. She's creating this really strong movement and power. She's working mm. from the floor using the pedestal as a support. Oh, nice. This, I mean, we were talking about the growth and the power of spring. So you can really see how that comes here. So it's going to be interesting to see how she continues. Aelin is from Akershus in Norway and has such a, a beautiful story. Her love for nature is so evident in her designs. She enjoys hiking in the woods to find inspiration and was just had a dream of being a teacher and I think that's what's so special about these competitors they're not just students of floral design they're educators they're teachers like like yourself as well so Aylin does something really cool she enjoys making pop-up art in nature hoping that maybe these works of art will be found by others later on so kind of talk about surprises like the yeah. surprise task she leaves little artistic surprises in nature. Yeah, which is just lovely. So and sweet. she describes her style as very Scandinavian and in, de in details by wanting to work that out all more with also tropicals and colors. And she's a well-experienced competitor. Does this, this girl, woman, she won her first ever competition that she took part in, the regionals in her part of the country, and directly after that won the national championships in Norway competitor there is one hour and 15 minutes remaining on your competition time you have another one hour and 15 minutes and saying that we're going over to nor neighboring country to Norway Sweden my home country where we have Sophie down on her knees weaving in flowers into her structure oh almost like a nest it's the nest where spring will be born, maybe. Beautiful. Ah, oh, lovely. She gave us a look. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe we're on to something I here. I think we are on to something. That is good. And, uh, because and that, is, that is the theme. Spring is a season of new beginnings and growth. Yeah. And the, the quote, time will pass and seasons will come and go. Yeah. And the style here we see, Sophie explained it, Scandinavian, with... We have this word simplicity coming back and back over and over again, but there's nothing simple with it. But really inspired from nature, and that we see in this design once again, and we see in several of her designs, that's where she gets her inspiration from. Beautiful, just beautiful. What we also know about Sophie, you told me, she works in the most fashionable flower shop in Sweden. So if anyone finds themselves there, you have to go visit her yeah if you visit Stockholm you have to visit that shop oh how beautiful yeah. and we're heading that way my dear I do this every time <laughs> yeah but that's fun you're better with direction then, then I get a feeling of that I'm in control <laughs> <laughs> and we're going further on to United Kingdom and whoa oh. I mean every corner has its surprise I know. you're like a kid on Christmas morning turning the yeah corners. but look I mean she's working on so many levels wow. all the way from the floor you know, around the pedestal, in the container, and above out of that one. This is Laura Leung from United Kingdom. 
from Stourbridge West Midlands. England has won the cup three times. Three times. And after that, we have both France and Norway who won it twice. So there she is from a very talented country. Laura has been working with flowers for 30 years. Competing has been a, a positive catalyst, she says, because it's her passion to encourage and help the next generation of florists to flourish. So as we all learn, yeah, and she helps young florists competing, and herself, she's competing a lot. She's been chosen flor florist of the year at Chelsea Flower Show in London several times. She won several competitions, and she took part in the Europe Cup in 2016. And now she's back on the competition floor. This is Kelvin Lee now from Chinese Taipei, hometown of Tainan in Taiwan. They are making quick work of these of this basket. Yeah, and and see now what what Kelvin has done. He's taken those plastic transparent containers as he has broken them into pieces to create these crystals that he has uh, through his design. Probably like you know melting ice parts or oh, something. Wow! To, because that's a part of spring, you know, winter and snow and ice melting yes. away, giving space for the spring flowers. We can't wait. We're very eager for that yeah, here. Yeah, uh, me too. I love spring. And um, Kelvin, he, he won the Asia Cup in 2006. And before that, competed a lot. And you know more, he also has his own school, huh? Yes, Kelvin Lee um, established his very own academy for people to come and learn about florals. And also created the Kelvin Lee floral design brand. Very impressive. He began to train world-class contestants from Taiwan back in 2007. He believes that floral design is a kind of life creation and that plants can convey human emotions and stories. And I think that's what we all feel when walking around looking at these competitors, what they are doing. And I think a lot of us, we look like, how can they, where do they get all those ideas from? How do they come up with it? But these, as we have said before, these are the best in the world at the moment. And saying that, we come to the reigning European champion, Tamás Mesefi from Hungary. He won Europe Cup in 2016. He's won the Hungarian Cup. And I mean, the list of awards is long, but we have a champion here as well. What I find to be so impressive is each of these competitors got the same kit, the same box. If you look closely at this design, these little gray cubes, yep. those are pieces of foam exactly. from the packaging. Yep. And that's the fine thing with a surprise item like this, because they approach it so differently, so none is the other alike. So here we have a totally different expression. And what I find is funny, several of them have been a little bit inspired from their other designs they prepped because we see all the black going through as a yes, theme yes. in his designs. And then he's now pulling that into the surprise item as well. And the pop of hot pink that's kind of coming through here. <laughs> Tomas first learned about floristry when he was in a horticultural school at the age of 14. But then he took a turn and decided to become a florist. Very and clever decision, yes. I must say. And so when you think about being in high school and having, having a passion, having a dream, what will I do with the rest of my life? This could be you. So yeah. follow that spark. Yeah, and think of... Oh, and Alicia, see here who we have here beside yes. us. So this competition is very special because it is, it is really, while this is a global competition, this is a celebration of American homegrown flowers from farms big and small. Joining us now, Anna, and from Certified American Grown, the sponsor of this surprise task. Yes. Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so tell us, you, you guys put together this package for the, the competitors. W what did you assemble? Uh, we have um, about 14,000 stems from throughout the country. We've got California, Florida, Wisconsin, Washington, and several other states. Tell us also about Certified American Grown. It is, it's, a, it is a brand. Yes, it's a beautiful, iconic logo, and we represent about 50% of the domestically grown product. 
uh, that you that's produced in America now, and um, it's both big and farms, uh, large, small, small and large farms. So that is to awake awareness of that you actually grow a lot of flowers within the country as well, and we know, thinking of the planet and the earth, this about you know short deliveries or being grown close to us. That makes it even better in the heart to them work with the flowers, I would say. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Mm. Made in the USA, grown in the USA. Correct, yes. Yeah. Or just grown two blocks away. That's what I oh, like. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And as you watch what these different designers are doing with these packages that you've assembled, your mind must just be blown by all of it. Absolutely. I am just fascinated by the designers have the exact same flowers, and just every single one has been different. And it's fascinating. Fascinating to see our product be put to such beautiful artistic use. They're even using your packaging. Yes, I saw Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even the foam here is becoming a piece of art. It's yeah. so amazing. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Uh, when you put things in the hands of creative people, anything can happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. And Alicia? Wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> So we are heading over to... It's only my, to... fourth, my fourth loop around. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go to Stefan, Stefan Triebe from Germany, and see how he have taken his personal approach on the surprise package. Oh, see, Alicia, huh? Ooh, how bright and colorful. Yeah, here we have a sparkling, colorful, and energetic spring, I would say. Beautiful. Stefan is also, of course, very acclaimed. Yeah, he's German champion, winner. of course. That's why he's here on the floor. And went through his masters. He's also, as you said before, he's worked with Gregor Lersch, one of our um, celebrities within the profession, and learned a lot there. But now he has, I would say, his own, very own style. And that is a good thing, learning from others, but then blending it with your own personality to create your unique expression. And that we see with all the designers here. In his spare time, Stefan enjoys visiting flea markets to search for new materials and additional inspiration, which I think is so cool because the idea that you find treasure in someone else's unloved items, giving them a new life. Yeah, there is a place for every item and every person in this world. We he, just have to find the match. Absolutely. He's also interested in art and architecture, and I think we can see that in his designs. Yeah, and that's something we see that most of these designers share. That's passion for everything creative, decorative. So in, if it's interior, floral design, architecture, it's so alike. And let's see, we have a Pirio. Pirio Kopi from Finland. Mm -hmm. And as you can see from her work here, everything is, is playful. There is just so much, I, wanna, I would like to call it like girlish joy, right? It yeah, has it, just a, it's like you look at her work and I, you get butterflies in your stomach. When you describe it like that, that's exactly who Pirio is. There's a lot of girlish joy and energy in this woman, and she's a passionate representative for the profession, doesn't miss one option to talk about flowers and the joy of flowers. And she has, through all of her career, she's competed a lot, and she has been in the finals for both the last World Cup and the Europe Cup, ending up on third runner-up in both of them. She's also an author. As you can see, all you have to really do is look at her to understand that she has made her passion for florals uh, also a passion for fashion. So she wrote a book called Beautification with Floral Jewelry. And look what she's done here. She's taken the, the kind of the nest, almost the, this nest, and created a heart. Yeah, you see, so it, the heart, probably that is her feeling for spring, and we all feel for spring with our oh, heart. My heart is ready to explode for spring. <laughs> yeah, and what she's done, <laughs> she's built this structure that's almost like walking on the floor, and then she took the two plastic bases for water source, so all the flowers, they go through the heart, down on those plates to get their water. So it looks like, you know, that this heart of spring is just walking towards us. Oh, yes, mm. yes. So typically, Perio to come up with a more playful approach on the theme. So pretty.
We turn the corner now, heading to Christina Gudiksen from Denmark to get a look at her vision for the surprise package. Yeah. Oh, there, there, there it is. And uh, Christina, twice Danish champion, twice Nordic champion. She competed in the last World Cup in Berlin in 2015. And here she is again, eager to compete. And if we look at her solution here, we see because spring, you know, all those new blooms coming up from the, the dry material, the mm. bare branches. I mean, that power and energy you have in spring, really beautifully visualized. And it all comes in this sort of organized mess, as I would call it. And that's she, how spring is. Yes, yes. It's where, it's where uh, the old becomes the new. And really, that is was the heart of the task at hand. Spring is a season of new beginnings and growth. As the ground begins to thaw, spring flowers emerge from their winter rest to start a new cycle of life. Yeah, and we have seen that very well visualized in all the designs we've seen so far. And uh, this way, my dear, <laughs> we are heading towards China to Yao Wei and to see his translation of spring. Oh. oh. Oh, it's a turbulent spinning spring we have look here. Look at this. And if you look at what Yao, Yao is doing, he has several circles. First one around the container in the bottom and inside. And then he repeats those circles that, that power the movement of spring further up in his structure. Time will pass and seasons will come and go. It's a cycle. Right? Yep. So there's a cycle. You see, they, these are clever designers. This looks wonderful. A little bit now about Yao Wei. Again, uh, internationally uh, acclaimed, award-winning, as many of our competitors are. Ever since he was a child, he loved flowers. And so he feels fortunate to do what he loves as a career, I think, for any of us who have the opportunity to pursue a passion and to enjoy every day as if we're not working. Yeah, that's just fantastic. And we've seen in his other design working on Chinese culture and everyone worked on their special themes before. So now is the challenge to see what they do once they get all of these materials, the same kind of materials and how they then manage to do their personal interpretation from those materials. Competitors, you have another hour remaining on this design. One more hour of passionate, fun, joyful, amazing floral design work. Surprise work. <laughs> oh, and look here, yes. Alicia. We're with Katerina from the United States. So Katerina Stewart is our hometown competitor, our, our home country competitor from El Cerrito, California. And as you can see, she gets very creative and playful with different elements. Uh, we've seen her working with velvet and leather. And now as you see these competitors take these surprise packages and work with every bit of material, this, this is, is, this it, is a it, foam, foam from the packaging yeah. becomes a work of art. Yeah, and what, what Katrine has done, she has created the, the visual of of the earth of soil that is created from the, the oasis foam. And then she's put the glass tubes in there and then taken these black rings that she cut out to make a very earthy, I mean, you can just wow. find the power. And now starting doing a structure with aluminum wire. And from this, I mean, I can just see how these flowers are just gonna burst out of the ground. When we make the second loop around, I, I, yeah, we we're gonna see really them. see spring yeah. has sprung. And entering Japanese territory, territory with uh, Kasuhiro, and he oh look, it's it's like a a tree, blooming tree. Yes. Huh? Wow. So he he's worked from the foam base in the container, and then is working in this tree structure. And I think we're going to see a whirlwind of all the different flowers up in there. Absolutely beautiful. His hometown is Okayama, Japan. 
And once again, we have a, a winner of many competitions. He's won over 10 competitions in his home country, Japan, and also won international titles. Like many of the designers today and competitors, he comes from a floral DNA. He was working as a florist in his, pa his parents' flower shop, and initially he just went to take over the business end of it until he was inspired by his master to become a florist and then start expressing himself creatively, and now he's world-renowned. World yeah, he also got the floral, flower, floral virus, as I call it. He just <laughs> caught by the bug and cannot get out of it. So business was in the back and design went in the front seat. Okay, and his signature is minimalism design, excelling at making dramatic designs with minimum materials. Hmm. And then we see, we're gonna try to cross the floor here. I mean, it's, it's so amazing and so fun to see so many people looking at this World Cup competition. And that's also, I know that competitors, it gives them energy to see so many people looking at what they're creating. And Nam Bao from Vietnam. Wow. He has his very special expression as well. And see, we have this, I mean, eruption of pink of lines pink. and spring, huh? Oh, yes. Nam is the co-founder of Peony Home. That's a Vietnamese home decor brand. He is a TV flower show host. Yeah, and he's published several books on floral design in his home country, Vietnam. And he works for several of the exhibitions. So he's one of the one in Vietnam pushing the profession forward. So this is one passionate designer. He was born in a mountain village on the south side of Vietnam. And when he was eight years old, he started picking flowers either from the family garden or from the roadside and then cutting and arranging blooms. And that's where he realized as a kid that this was in his future. Yeah, I, I, I just love stories like that because it shows the true passion. Mm. It was a calling from his childhood. Yeah. And we are, well, for, and I borrowed that one. Uh, for those of you that are new in the room, the designers are doing their surprise package. It's a designer's choice where they decide exactly what and which of the materials they have all been given the same what they want to use. And the theme, time will pass and seasons will come and go. The cycle of nature, spring. And within that, then they can do whatever they like. So that's why you see 23 totally different designs coming along in each pod. What I think is so beautiful is that, as we see with Lena here, her signature style is coming through in this expression with a box of surprise flowers she didn't know what to, she was going to open, what she would do with it, but yet, it's still running through the thread and the theme of, of what you can see as her signature. Yeah, and we were talking about it before, Alicia, that we see their, their professional personality, their artistic personality, and we see that Lena, she works very decoratively. She likes to have all these stems crossing, overlapping, creating the dynamic within a decorative shape. And that goes all the way from the branches in the bottom. I saw this when we started. So we have a foam base underneath and then all these overlapping beautiful spring flowers. She describes herself as being very Mediterranean. She was born right on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea in Valencia. So you can see that kind of that passionate sea seaside Mediterranean vibe coming through in her work. Yeah, and uh, as we know, she's worked as a teacher since the 90s. She ran her own shop. She's really passionate about passing on the profession and the knowledge. Next, we have Natalia Zhisko from Russia. We know that, and we have learned earlier, that her favorite color is yellow. Yeah, and she, of course, managed to find some yellow flowers and selected them from the material. But look here, a total different approach again. Natalia has taken one of those plates 
and create a, an organic structure from all the branches. And now the flowers, he is attaching and weaving them in between that structure, securing them with wire. And you see the energy and direction you have here. A lot of people have been working upwards, but here we see more of a horizontal Ooh. line with a lot of power inside. A little bit about Natalia, her hometown is Moscow. She originally studied biology at the university in Russia. So many of these designers and competitors come from a vast array of backgrounds. But I think when we think about what you do in your industry, it's art, but it's science and it's math and it, and it is just a culmination, architecture. And, and it's just so beautiful to watch how the vision here. Yeah, I usually say that a, a, a floral designer that's a true mixture of, of a scientist, a magician, and a emotional, lovely, creative person. Yes, yes. I like what you say, a magician, because that's really what we're watching here. I yeah. said er, earlier, it was like watching live theater. It's like watching a ballet, yeah. but also, in, if you were to see this in a time lapse from just uh, opening this box of blooms to what we're witnessing created in 90 minutes is absolutely magic. Yeah, and Natalia, we have to mention here, she's the, she won the Europe Cup in 2011 and then she's just piled rewards on top of that. So we're gonna be interesting to see if she will be one of the 10, sem, 10 semi-finalists that we will have here on the floor tomorrow. To France now, and our competitor Hervé Frizal. He is from the south of France in Belleuse-sur-Mer. And Ooh. look at this interpretation. I, I just get those huge smiles in my face I when know. I see what they're doing. I mean, it's a surprise package for them, but for, for all of us, it is, it's such a surprise to see the different takes on this very same box. Yeah, and as, as we said then, we were talking about it when we read, read the theme and the cycle of life. And here, I mean, what do we have? We have all that movement and the magic of spring. Certified American Grown provided them with a vast array of colors, but each of these designers has chosen their own palette from it, which yeah. as we see. One of the interesting things about Hervé and his floral design team, they decorate for some of the most prestigious villas and yachts on the French Riviera. Yeah. That's very nice. I would love that job as well. And also, if certified American grown flowers, they, they sponsor all the flowers, then we should thank Accent Decor, which is a Google sponsor of the event. They have sponsored all the props, all the technical material, all of that. So we have certified American grown and we got Accent Decor as the two main sponsors for this task. Hervé, uh, like many of our competitors, ha comes from a floral family and he was almost born in a flower shop. I think you think he was born on the floor of the flower shop, huh? <laughs> or close. <laughs> His mother has been a florist for over 50 years. She passed on her passion to her two sons. He took over his family business and has risen to just this global name in the industry. Yeah, and here we got yet another TV star showing flowers on TV. He's published several books as well. I mean, just talent, talent, talent. But I'm, I'm curious, Alicia. I, I need to go uh, You're on. going around the yeah. corner. Okay. So we're going to see what Oh Mien from Korea, see what he has been creating. Oh, oh. I, I, I love this. I know this. there's such a surprise oh. for all of us for each turn. And, and see here, Oh, he's taken the pedestal, put the container, then he takes one of these oasis foam rings on the edge of the container, and see further up in his structure, he has the second oasis foam ring there. So he really gets fabulous volume and size in his design. So some of these competitors are building horizontally, they're building out, he is building up. It's just so incredible to see these, oh, well, we're gonna see the last one soon, but all these 23 different, totally different solutions. A little bit about, oh, he began, uh, became interested in floral design after he was introduced to it by an acquaintance back in 1989, and then is where he started his studies and has now competed all across the world and 
owns 15 flower shops. 15. And a school on top of that. And he, and he owns his, yeah. runs his own floral academy, which mm. is unbelievable. Yeah. There's some busy, some busy and designers. Look at the excitement of all these. Hello, the audience, everybody. Huh? And we should mention the reigning FTD World Cup champion is also from Korea, and we've seen him about yeah, Alex we Choi. We have had Alex Choi here on the floor. And as I said before, we have several well, world champions on the floor because the thing is, we can't get enough of this. We just want to see more. We want more inspiration and we want to learn more. And now we're coming into our last competitor, Vincenzo Antonucci from Italy. And you see, and once again, totally different. Wow. Yeah. It's funny, as you look at each one, you say, I didn't remember seeing these leaves before, but e each artist has taken their own individual approach to this challenge and looks at this bounty here with a different set yeah. of eyes. They have just personalized all these beautiful materials into themselves. We uh, know that for also Vincenzo, this is a family affair. Uh, his father, Carmelo, competed back in 1989 yeah. in the World Cup. In Tokyo, in, in Tokyo. Japan. And we know that dad, dad was here earlier uh, cheering him on. All of the parents who were in, yeah. in attendance today watching their children compete, they say, my heart is pounding. Yeah. You know, I, I, their fingers are crossed. It's such a beautiful thing and to And he see. was such a proud dad. And we also know about Vincenzo is that he has two passions in life. Well, he has three because he has his family that I know he's very passionate about. But he has one, one foot in interior design. He designs interiors and luxury kitchens. I think we can see that uh, he, in, in his then put, definitely. And then the other one in, in the flowers. And his goal for all his designs, this competition, was to join those two in what I will call a happy marriage. Okay. I, I think that it's really quite and remarkable what we Every seeing. day work, he runs a school together with his father. Uh, and he also teaches at several different schools in Italy. So it is one family business. Hmm. This yeah, is, give, yeah, give them a hand, yeah. please. Huh? Is this the fan club here, friends, family? <laughs> oh, no. oh, well, it's always good to having a fan club. Is everyone enjoying this, just watching it evolve in real time? Yes, it's wonderful, beautiful. Yeah, it's great, great, great. Look forward to it every year. But this is a, a new event. This is next level yeah. for the Philadelphia Flower Show, isn't it? Yes. We'll turn it into a yearly event? Sure. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, we have to talk about to the organization about that one. Okay. <laughs> because we know there is a lot of work behind an event like this. Incredible. Okay, competitors. You have 45 minutes remaining on this surprise box item. You have another 45 minutes of the competition time. So, Alicia, my dear. I, I, now I, is where we really get to see now how we're these do... designs are unfolding now that we're halfway through. It's our second loop around. Yeah, but I think we would remind everyone now of the hashtag and everything. So we spread the word of the competition and floral design around yes. the world. If you are taking pictures or video and you're posting to social media, use the hashtag FTD World Cup to aggregate all of these beautiful images so that everyone everywhere can see. I will tell you, I have been getting tweets and Facebook messages from people all around the world who are watching this streaming live right now through these competitions because they haven't had a chance to come here. They don't have a front, I have front row seat. I have someone here looking at Leopoldo that we should interview. We have Bogar, his partner in the school in Mexico City. So Bogar, tell us, how does it feel to see your partner competing here at the World Cup? I'm super contento. It's something very emotional for me and for all Mexico to see 
que eh, alguien con mucho talento nos represente. Yeah, what Bulgari is saying, he's extremely happy and satisfied and so proud of seeing his partner working here at the competition. Are you nervous? Mucho. <laughs> oh, he's very nervous. What makes you nervous then? Don't you know that he's very focused and in, in shape? Sí, pues, híjole, es que es, es bien importante que nosotros podamos ver cosas que de repente se le ocurren a Polo y es, pues, fabuloso verlo trabajar. Yeah, you know, he's trusted, Leopoldo, he's, he is fabulous in his work, but of course he gets nervous, but you, no, you, you nice. know he's going to do good, don't you? No. Yeah, of course, all of you do. Give Leopoldo a warm hand, huh? Yes. Everyone, cheer him up. Oh, come on, huh? Yeah, there. Uh, so this is, again, the very first time Mexico is competing in this world competition. And right here in Philadelphia, it is such an honor. And again, Alicia, this is Leopoldo Gomez. We have another important person to interview a little bit here. We have from the technical committee, I explained before, the technical committee are those six important people that check so the competitors stay within the rules and regulations. So tell us, have the work been easy? Uh, the competitors and the assistants have been amazing. They've been so good sticking to the rules. Uh, yeah, it's been very, uh, very good competition so far. So you have not had to give any penalty points? Well, that's a secret, isn't it? That, that bit's a secret, yeah. Because your job is, I would say, just as important as the judges, because you're creating the framework so it will be equal for all the competitors. Well, there are parameters for each of these tasks. Yeah. Is, is there anything in particular for this one, that um, with this surprise package in terms of technicality? Um, we do have some rules for this one. It has to have 70% of flower material. Um, and also there is a measurement as well that they have to keep within. Um, but that can be very similar to all the tasks that they've had so far anyway. Yeah. And such a pleasure to have this competition here and an honor in Philadelphia. We hope that you get a chance to enjoy our city. Yeah, well, um, I've not had a chance yet but I'm hoping to get a look round on Monday when it's all over. Oh, please do. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for your time. Now continue your important job. So again, this is Leopoldo Gomez from Mexico. <laughs> so we are going to the Netherlands, Alicia. We are going to see what our birthday boy Hans is doing, how far he has. Oh, look. I mean, he's oh, working so focused. So. Look here, and as we said before, Hans, also born into the, flower, the world of flowers with the, with, from the flower shop of his parents. And he, last year, he, he, he won a silver gilt medal at the Chelsea Flower Show and also won, of course, the preliminary competition to participate in the World Cup. But he started competing long before that. Absolutely. And he strives to show passion, emotions, and feelings in his arrangements while also staying true to himself. And I think what he's doing here, um, just this, how you always mention the, the color scheme. So this is like going dark to light. So the, yeah. kind of the way spring comes up and, and, and these beautiful colors. Yeah, that is so true, Alicia, because you see, if we have the darker colors at the bottom and it going lighter and lighter, you can actually visualize a movement, a mm. growth, gradually taking you further up, forcing spring up through that ice and snow. That's very poetic. Yeah. I yes. am quite poetic, actually. Flowers make me poetic. And look, we've got the father there and he's giving a big thumbs up, huh? Yeah. Hi, we, Dad. We are on track again. Back now to Bart Hassam from Australia. Hello. Yeah, we're back again. And you look smiley, cheerful, and happy. And relaxed. 
<laughs> that is so good. I, I just love these competitors. Yes, this How is can the, they be so relaxed? This is their uh, fourth task. Yeah. It, it must take, I, you know, creative energy takes a lot of adrenaline, right? Yeah, but it gives so much energy back. Oh, so, so it's, it's a like winning a, game in the end. You get more energy than you consume. It's a self-filling tank of energy. Yeah, definitely. And as I said, when I was here last time, uh, Bart, he's worked a lot in Japan, where he's worked together with Yoko. Yoko was the competitor of the World Cup when I competed years ago in 2002. Wow. And so he, he worked there for many years, and then he has in Brisbane, where he runs his own flower shop. So he is this, I, I would say, beautiful mix of East and West but with his very own personal touch, as we've seen with all the designers, whatever style they have. It's just incredible to watch just the measuring, the specific placement. And in the other designs that we've seen, the other three, they've had a chance to do this at home, to practice. This is all improvisation. Yeah, and that's where we now can see I mean, the ones who do this good, they will be in the semifinals. I see. Yeah. This, but, is, this is really what's, what kind of sets... Yeah, and I up. need to do a little close-up peek to see. Bart also worked within the foam, and as you see, then created like this canopy above, all the branches up, then a structure, and within that now he's putting in all his beautiful flowers, and I bet there's a nice movement on top mm. of that one also. The movement and the energy are, of spring. These are very impressive. They're just beautiful. So, how, what are the Australians saying here? Are you happy with what Bart is doing? Very impressed, very impressed. And you as I, we know that this is a dream not only for Bart, but for everyone. But have you followed the preparation? Has this been his life for a long time, or how has he prepared? He's been, he's been practicing for quite a while, so we're really impressed in what he's doing. Um, he, kn he knew for the last 18 months that he was going to be Australia's representative here at the World Cup. So um, he's had a, him and Shauna have put in a lot of hard work and long hours at night and training and practicing, and he's doing a great job for Australia. That sounds like the board I know. It's been his life for those 18 months, I think. It has, it has, and he's grown up doing it, as, as you know, with the information that you've given out that he's, um, he's been involved in for a long time and he's doing a great job. And he knows he has the full support of you all from Australia. Thank you. That's right. Thanks, Pear. Yes. Thanks, Pear. Round of applause. <laughs> Woohoo! Woo <-hoo. laughs> <laughs> now, Bart, don't forget to work when you're the cheerleader, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn back around the corner to see what Dr. Solomon Leung from Hong Kong is doing for us here. I mean, it's just incredible, these different approaches on this material and the theme they have. The different interpretations are, yeah. are just stunning. Hmm. And what we can see that we've, you've said in several of these pods that the, the surprise item actually have so many relations to the other designs because see the transparency, the structure work that we see in these other designs. So they really managed to show their own creativity and personality in the designs. As a doctor of philosophy in cultural studies, Dr. Solomon Leong's extensive knowledge of cultures and history in relation to floral art has turned him into a successful commentator of floral designs. Yeah, but the thing with Solomon, he's 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 in so many parts of the flower industry. He, he helps running shows, he exhibits, he competes, he runs his flower business. And as you said the last time, he's a very influential when it comes to wedding design in China. And I think we can certainly see that in, in the work here. His work reflects the position of Hong Kong, he says, at the crossroads of East and West. His style is intrinsically influenced by the international, but at the same time, as evidenced here, remains quintessentially Asian with a strong influence of his native Chinese culture. And that's what we see, so keep up the good work, Solomon. Beautiful. <laughs> and Alicia, we're going this way, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are gonna go to Czech Republic and see what Primish has, oh, 
I, I love these laps around. These are, yeah. I know. This is this. They're just stunning. So, as I said before, he had created this more basket-like shape, and that was kind of strict and growing upwards. But now he has added both with the flowers and branches and other materials all these sort of curvy lines to really get more energy into the design. Really pretty. Prem's artwork is a unique expression of sheer purity. He says, to him, each plant is majestic and deserves a special place in the object he creates, but each element must also work together. Yeah, and he I has a quote, which I think is, is so beautiful. His motto is to never conceal your feelings and not be ashamed of them because you have a unique opportunity to show precious pieces of your soul to the world. That is what he's doing today and every artist in this room. Yeah, and I think that's what driven these artists all the way to where they are today, being on the floor of the 2019 FDF World Cup. That is one true achievement. Yes, mm. 23 people to be extremely proud of. Yeah. And with Primish, he's won international competitions both in, in his home country, in Slovakia, in Poland, and received several goals for his presentations. And around the corner from Czech Republic, we find Canada. And we've got Paul here. Ah, see here, Alicia. He's also bringing in the packaging material, yes. as you said. It's so incredible to see the use of everything. Every single piece of this package can and will be used throughout this competition. And, and here, I must say, you know, he studied architectural technique and design. Look what he has done. He's taken these, cut those black rings, attached them to the branches, and now he's putting the glass tubes inside of them. So not only aesthetical use, but technical use. And that's what we designers, it's a dream when we can combine the two aesthetics and techniques within the one material. Absolutely incredible. His hometown is in Kamloops, British Columbia. He has extensive professional experience, um, but also owns his own wedding event decor and design services company called Paul Jarrah's Floral Design. So in Canada, this is a well-known name. Yeah. And now he's a well-known name throughout the world. Absolutely. By competing on this stage here. And as we said before, all flowers, American certified grown flowers, and all the props coming from accent decor and from yes. all the different materials matched up into the theme here, Alicia. It is the certified American grown surprise package. They assembled this incredible box of blooms and buds and, and, and all kinds of florals that are all grown here in the United States on farms, big and small. And so they put together this package. Each of these designers received the exact same package. And we're seeing just incredible expressions of creativity here. This is Aelin now from Norway. Okay, competitors, there's another half hour remaining. You have another 30 minutes to finalize this surprise item. And when we were at Elin last time, we were talking about how she built the structure. Mm. And you see now when she has put all these tubes in and getting more and more flowers in, so we get a very transparent, energetic structure striving upwards. And that, I think, describes what Elin says about her design. Light, Scandinavian, and into the details. And we see that all of them have, of course, but yeah, she's staying really true to her personality. Absolutely, almost like an enchanted forest kind of vibe. Norway has won the World Cup twice before. Yep. The last time it happened when it was in Shanghai, and then it was, yeah in the past there. So it's a very, I mean, forthcoming country within our industry, like all of these here. It's just unbelievable to watch all of the vision and the artistry. And again, this is, 
if we were watching theater, this whole competition, this fourth round is like watching improvisational theater. That is actually totally well described what it is because this is not scripted. Yeah, but now is when they can use all the the knowledge they have, you know, collected over the years, and that toolbox, as I call it, if that toolbox is filled enough, then this will be not easy peasy, but it will be just a creative joy for them. And what we see here from Aylin's pod, as many of the others, this expression that they're working on today almost flows. It's a flow with the rest of this total look, and, and it's just a, an absolute reflection of who they are. Yeah, and we're going to go to Sweden. It's getting worse. <laughs> We are going to see what Sophie, Sophie Danielson, sir, from Stockholm, Sweden, what she is doing. Because when we were here last time, we saw she was weaving flowers into her nest, nest. of spring. And yes. we were so right. Look at this and look at that, that spiral coming through now in the reef. So you really have that dynamic energy coming from the center and then spinning out. And we, we're all longing for that power of oh, spring. Oh, we, we sure are. I have mm. to say, if you're watching this right now, streaming live on 6abc.com, also on YouTube, it's so beautiful to watch, but there's nothing like seeing this in person. Nothing could to do justice to these designs than to, if, if you can, if you have the opportunity to come to the flower show, they'll all be on display through Sunday, March 10th. Come here, witness it, watch this live action history and, and see these designs in person. Yeah. Smell, take it in. Yeah, but you cannot miss out on a unique opportunity like this. But let's see now, we have some Swedish sharing here. See what yes, they say. Yes, this is your home country. Yeah, Matsula. How, what do you think this? You have done well from it. I'm very proud to be a Swede. Yeah, well, that here we know. And what, what do you feel standing here looking at Sophie competing? What emotions does this awake in you? I'm making me real happy. And uh, in Sweden we just talk about the handcraft, uh, the florist. And uh, Sophie is a very uh, talented person and uh, we are very proud to have her. Because you know yourself, because you and I, we have competed with and against each other many times. You're a very experienced competitor as well. Thank you, Per. Yeah, you were a young guy when I was the champion. And uh, you have to, to see me be a champion f several times. And uh, I have been in the European Cup. But I, uh, I'm very proud of all the, the florists in this competition. I mean, we all are. We are so excited and happy to see they're competing. Thank you so much for those words. And just a reminder to everyone, Pear, you won this back in 2002, this World Cup. Is that the only time Sweden has taken the title? Well, that's the one and only time one we and have only won. One and only, so far, so far. Yeah, but who knows? Who kn we have exactly Sophie on right. the floor here. It's still an open game, this, yes. for all the 23 competitors. And tonight we will know which 10 of them are going to the semi-finals. To Laura Leung now from the United Kingdom. And I, I think it's, it's just so romantic, all of the designs she's created, almost like, um, you know, um, it, it has an enchanted feel, a fairy tale look about it. Yeah, and, and once again, see how they've used these materials from certified American grown flowers and accent decor, as you say, not only the botan botanicals, the props, but even the packaging. So they really used everything they got from the sponsors for this task. And I just think that's incredible. So Laura says she loves the competition atmosphere, right? This kind of like open theater kind of working with feeding off this energy from the crowd and, and having people be able to watch from the very beginning to the finished product. And she says um, that these kind of projects stretch her imagination. And I think that's part of the process, you, as, as you keep growing. Yeah, but there's the thing that to challenge yourself and in a, in, in a situation like this, the competition, I mean, you really have to go beyond what you have done before. So you actually, you know, enter new territory and develop your creativity. That's simply gorgeous. These are really so impressive. And now we're turning the corner and going to Chinese Taipei with Kelvin Lee. 
And as I described before, when he broke the plates to create the icy feeling, but see the warmth of spring is winning over the ice. Ah, he comes to us from Taiwan. Established a floral design school under his very own name and also created the Calvin Lee floral design brand and introduced the first Taiwan florist career competition in 2017. Yeah, and he won the Asia Cup in 2006. Uh, yeah, no, I like really enjoyed these interpretations of this surprise item that they all are doing. And I mean, they, they, <laughs> they work so fast. I mean, in intensively. It's so we, fast. When we were here a while ago, there was hardly any flowers in because it was still at the structure. Mm. And now it's full bloom in spring here, huh? This is Tomas from Hungary, the current European champion. Yes, and he, I know, he has a passion for the new, unique and robust tropical plants as well as the, as the fragile meadow flowers. And we can see that through all his designs, that, that blend of material, and that's very typical of, of his design. And as we said, he won, he's the European Cup winner, but he has, up until this year, competed after the Europa Cup and won. But you remember he, he had his own flower shop. Yes. But he closed it after winning the Europa Cup in 2016. And I, I, you said it's very, that's something that's typical in the industry. So even though that you would think that would be the culmination to have your own brand, to have your own shop, there's so much more to do. There's so much more to learn and, and to experience yeah. globally. And winning a cup like this open up the doors to the world and suddenly you, you can get a sign for showing, teaching and demonstrating all over the world. And that is in true the dream of many of the designers on the floor here. It's so beautiful to watch these take shape and to see how they how they coordinate with everything else that has been done, even though they have never seen these materials until today. Moving now to Germany, to Stefan Triebe, to see how his certified American-grown surprise package is coming along. Yeah, and he's staying true to see his colorful spring, but see, he's adding a lot of directions, not only... Yes. Yeah. Uh, to, to see how it, it starts from the base of the container and just erupts both upwards, sidewise and down. And that is usually how spring, when it finally arrives, yes. it totally surprises us. <laughs> Even though we're desperately waiting for it, it yeah. still does surprise us. Yeah, because it? we wait and we wait and we wait and <laughs> suddenly it's there. And what he described, the important thing for, for Stefan when creating is to start and find his creativity in one or other material. And we've seen in the other works and here, I think really the branches, the natural ones and the pink lines that we, I can see that's where he got his idea from, from the start. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and we will then continue. We're going to walk further on to see how far Perio is. You remember she was creating a heart. A heart, a floral Sta heart. A floral heart standing on the floor with the feet in the water. And look here. Now we see, really, we see the shape of the heart coming better and better. How beautiful. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's, it's a in, fresh pop of spring. Yeah, it's a Perio spring. Pop colored, playful. And look from this side, Alicia. Here you can see the energy and the movement of those stems and how they, how they force the flower heads up into the heart. And what we said when we were here last time, a very talented competitor, but most of all a good spokesperson for the profession and oh, the she, art of she floristry. She blew you a kiss. Oh, Pirio, we love you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's so cute. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm new to this. When I first met Pear a couple of days ago, we were getting it. He was giving me the biographies of all of these different designers. And he said, follow them on Instagram. So I did, and 
instantly overnight and over the last few days, my Instagram feed has been this beautiful explosion of creativity and color. And it's just so fascinating to see these creative minds and, and what they have accomplished. And it's just, we're, such, we're so proud to have them here in Philly. Yeah, and I mean, I advise all of you in the audience, search for these designers on Instagram and you will have a prettier life after that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and even at, you know, even at my uh, amateur novice level, uh, there's inspiration, you know, just for my everyday. For everyone. It can be a color, a flower variety. And we're now in with uh, Christina Goodix. I'm from Denmark. And when we're here last time, I say, see the energy in all mm. the crossed lines and sort of, the, you, you, you can feel that spring just want to burst out here. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, that, that it's not only for everyone that we long for it, but I think that's so beautiful how the designers can show that with the botanical materials, with all these certified American grown flowers. Yes. And they're just looking gorgeous yeah. to know that every single stem that's being worked with today has been grown right here in the United States. Mm. Small farms, large farms, all of this was made and grown here at home. Yeah. And we have Yao Wei from China. And we were looking before we saw those, the circles, the cycle of life that is a part of the theme and look for, at the for this surprise item. Yes. And we have seen from last time we were here, we have now really worked in more materials in, in those circles, the circles of life. And we have here Yao. He, he won the first place in the Flora World Cup competition in China last year. And he competed again and won another first place in the Uniflorist Cup Championships. Wow. Just a reminder, uh, they had an inspirational quote to work with um, when they, they looked at this certified American grown surprise package and said, what will I make with this? What will I do with it? The description of this task is a quote from Roy Bean, time will pass and seasons will come and go. Spring is a season of new beginnings and growth. And so as the ground begins to thaw, spring flowers emerge from their winter rest to start a new cycle of life. So these blooms remind us that Time marches on. Yeah, no, I, had on. Just, just, I mean, you, you put me in a dream state of mind. I mean, spring, it's the most beautiful season of the year, I think, because there's so much longing behind it. And we're w going further on to Katerina from United States. And, and her garden is growing. We start to see these blooms in, in action here as we, the last time we came, she was still working on the base. Yeah, and as I told you, when she put these, these glass tubes, these miniature vases in here, and she made a structure from the aluminum wire, and I said it's going to pop up a lot of flowers from the ground she's made, and staying true to her theme, I would say, of pop art, because her spring, you see, it's more symbolic because we don't have the branches, we, we have the brilliant colors, the brilliant materials. So it's and the a different earth. kind of spring. Yes, and, and, but yet we, see, we still see the earth, which she created from the foam packaging. Right, the brown? Yeah, yeah. That's true. And you see the, the soil. Okay, competitors, you have another 15 minutes to finalize the design. There is 15 minutes remaining on the competition time. 15 minutes of pure magic. Give them all a warm hand, all of the audience. Yes. <clears throat> this competition is flying by. Oh, yeah. We're turning another corner here. Yes. Oh, look. Huh? We were saying the last time that Kasuhiro from Japan, he was making more of the tree shape. Ooh. And as a sea. I was expecting that whirlwind up there, huh? It's lovely, see, and, but also it gets the energy from the base. You know, I talk a lot about lines and energy yes. and movement, but that's what spring is about. And that's what they so beautifully shows us, all of these designers. What I think is so fascinating is to watch the choreography of this. And much of the other, for the three other tasks, this was rehearsed choreography. So they had a vision, you, right? You sketch your vision. You, you, then start to execute it, and then you practice, you practice. Over and over this and over again. This is choreography of the moment. 
this is done in a total of two and a half hours from planning to finish design. Wow. Incredible. And yet mm -hmm. most of these mimicking the, the flow of the themes that they've been working with all along. Mm. So we're going to see what uh, Nam, Nam from Vietnam, what he has been creating. Remember when we saw it last time, it was sort of explosive and energetic. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. And it's still there. I mean, there's so much energy in it. And now he's also working a little bit on the base. So you see, it's almost like getting the root and then it comes more and more colorful and then just explodes out in this your favorite pink color yes this uh, this hot pink fuchsia the certified american grown surprise package contains you know some different kinds of materials along with the the flowers and it's so fascinating to see how each designer is incorporating them yeah and with only less than 15 minutes, we're gonna walk up and see what Lena from Spain sees. Oh. We were talking last time about her staying true to her style, and I must say that she's beautifully stayed true to her style. We were talking about crossing stems, crossing lines, but the beauty with this, you see, it looks very light, it's big, it has a lot of volume, but Beautiful. it doesn't look heavy, it looks layered and light. Yes. And that's mm. the thing about spring, it's fresh. Yeah. It's, it's a, a, a new beginning. Yeah, and I think this also shows, you know, the joy and happiness and the energy this woman has, as we know from her bio. So we let her finish the last small things there, and we go further on to Natalia from Russia. And Natalia, she's sitting looking pretty on the floor. <laughs> pretty, happy, Natalia. She looks oh, tired and happy. That's good, but keep on working, Natalia. Don't sit there and relax, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have more time to work, so get on with it. And Natalia, as we said before, she's a very experimental designer. And you have her motto there, don't you? Yes. Alicia, she, that, because it's a good one. She says, there is always something to learn and ways to continue developing. She became the European champion and brought Ru Russia to the Flower Olympus, where she became the trendsetter of flower design. With each piece, she aims to demonstrate the uniqueness and natural beauty of flowers. Yeah. And she's also famous for these flower dresses you were telling exactly. me. Exactly. She and her colleague in their company that works both national and international are well known for their beautiful flower dresses they do. So a lot of different styles from Natalia. And we're squeezing over to France, to Hervé, to see how his spinning spiral is coming along. Wow. These uh, are just so unique from one pod to the next to see what yeah. these artists have done. And, and you should see now how he's managed because he had the foam, those reefs, the foam oasis from Oasis, now he's covered them with the foliage, adding in the black again with the pearl heads, and then creating once again movement here. So they're layering and spinning and then going up in that big spiral. So a lot of power in that one. Was that a good description, Hervé? Yeah, he yes. was happy with the description. Oh, he liked your description. That's good. <laughs> okay, competitors, you have another 10 minutes remaining on the competition time. There are 10 more minutes to create magic. We head back now to Om Young from Seoul, our competitor from Korea today, the reigning champion right now, also <laughs> oh. from Korea. Oh. And, and this is, I mean, his, his garden is growing and expanding upward. This yeah. is just stunning. And it's, it's been growing so much, so he actually had to make a little stool or a ladder of the Oasis foam box because he has reached beyond his own height here. It's incredible how they can just stretch all the borders. And we see the transparency, the lightness in it. And you, you should, I know you know, Alicia, what I see, huh? Lines, growth, power, and most of those light yellow colors yes. at the top to just stretch your eye and your view up there. And we have Alex here again. We have our re reigning world champion. He will be the world champion for another couple of days until Sunday evening. Alex, come here. 
Uh, so we can just give him a warm hand. Yes, here he's we the have reigning a FTT world champion. world champion right here, Alex yeah. Choi. Yeah. How is it to watch this competition unfold from this side? Mm, you want to be there. It's a really, looks, it's a really, it's a really honor, and then it looks really fun to watch. Everybody's working really hard on it. Uh, 모든 선수들이 지금 다 마음껏 즐기고 있는 것 같습니다. I think everybody is having a lot of fun, and I, I really enjoy watching it. Yeah. What is his advice to these competitors in this competition? 이제 선생님 이분들한테 하고 싶은 얘기 있으신지. 어, 어저께도 이야기했다시피 정말로 마음껏 즐기고 자기가 가지고 있는 기량을 최선을 다해서 발휘했으면 좋겠습니다. Yeah, I, just, um, I already mentioned it yesterday, but I really hope everybody uh, have a moment to really, really put their passion in, uh, into it and then achieve where they want to be today. 후회 없이 경기를 치렀으면 좋겠습니다. Yeah, um, just give your heart and don't no regret. That's no regrets, true, yeah. no regrets. Put like your heart that. into it, have fun, and no regrets. Thank you, Alex, for being Alex Choi, which is so wonderful <laughs> to have him. He'll be here as the next champion is crowned. And going to Vincenzo from Italy. And more things yes. have happened here. You can clap. <laughs> 23 out of 23 competitors, last but not least, Vincenzo Antonuccio from Cortona, a town in Tuscany. And now we see, we don't have, only have those lines, the, the vertical ones, but now we're getting those natural bent curves from the salix and the grasses. So, I mean, they all managed to catch that movement and growth of spring. Huh? And the thing is, you match most of the designs, I, I, Alicia. You know, I, yeah. I thought I'd just brighten it up today because, <laughs> you know, yeah, here it's just so beautiful. I really have been saying it. This is the most beautiful place to be in Philadelphia, probably in the world of flowers right now. Yeah. And we know, when I, mean, I spoke to, briefly to, to Vincenzo the other day, that they all, these 23 competitors, they're so happy and proud of being here and they just truly enjoy it. It's their moment in their career. I know what they feel and it's an incredible emotional joy to be standing competing at a World Cup like this. This is the fourth task to yesterday. This is the second and final one of today and by this evening the semi-finalists will be announced. We start with 23 competitors and we'll be down to 10. Yeah, we will have a bunch of 23 extremely nervous floral designers in the Grand Banquet Hall tonight waiting for the news of who will be the 10 competing tomorrow in the semifinals. And for all of you audience here, they will be competing in their pods here tomorrow morning. So you want to see more floral magic, that's where you're going to see them. The 10 will compete in their pods for their semi-finals. Oh, we're back home on the stage. Yes, this competition flew by. Competitors, there's five minutes remaining on your competition time. You have now five minutes to finish your designs. Again, if you're out and about taking pictures, taking videos, be sure to use the hashtag FTD World Cup so that everybody, not just here on the convention floor, but everybody all across the world can see what is happening right now at the Philadelphia Flower Show. Just a little bit about PHS while we have a few moments. Of course, Flower Power is the theme of this year's Flower Show, and it's a chance for the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society to really show, showcase what, what is happening in this industry for the, from the experts to everyone here at home for 190 years. 190 years That's impressive. the Flower Show has yeah. been uh, using beautiful exhibits and educational programming and with each and every ticket purchased today you are helping 
PHS and its mission to um, bring fresh food to people, to bring produce, to bring flowers and, and the beautiful landscape yeah. all across our area. And when we're on our last minutes of this design, the Certified American Grown Flower Surprise Package, I think Anna from Certified American Grown, she is now, she must be ecstatic to see what the designers have done with their product. All right, aren't you, Anna? Yeah, I mean. They're very happy. Yeah. I mean, so this we, is uh, American bounty. It's homegrown. It is uh, from small farms, from large farms. This is the hard work of, uh, of our, you know, incredible farmers yeah. across our great country. So we thank Certified American Grown Flowers for the botanicals, the fresh materials. And we also thank our gold sponsor, Accent Decor, for providing the support for the FTD World Cup, including all the props being used in this very task. We also want to thank our premier sponsor, Smithers Oasis, for all of their support here. The Philadelphia Flower Show will be in town through next Sunday, March 10th. So if you are watching this on our live stream right now, you are inspired. You want to step out of the winter and step into this gorgeous floral oasis. Please come to the Flower Show. Uh, tickets are available. There are workshops. There are demonstrations. You have experts and you have this world-class competition competition still going on tomorrow where you can get a chance to watch the biggest names in this industry compete for this title. Yeah, and entering the flower show into this competition area is like entering paradise. Oh, it so. sure is. And it's so educational, it's inspirational, and it's, a it's actually stunning. Yeah, and to see professionals in action, I think it doesn't matter what profession it is, but of course, better for me with floral design. Of course. It's such enjoyment to see. I have been treated to uh, just, this is, is eye opening. It's just, we have people who have come from all around the world to be here in our fine city, this birthplace of American freedom, and we are hosting. Uh, 23 nations plus and it's just it's such an honor to have everyone here for this I hope people understand how big a deal it is to be this champion to, to win this competition yeah and also the World Cup being of such magnitude because it's only held every four to six years it's not a yearly event so for these designers some of them might have been waiting for years to take part and we heard several of them they've mentally prepared for almost two years and they all got the assignments, the three first tasks, half a year ago. So they have lived with this competition, I know, 24-7. And competitors, there's one minute left of the competition time, and having only one minute left to do your final touches, and that means that we will now need the help from all, everyone in the audience, for our countdown and our Our Liberty liber Bell. Countdown. The Liberty Bell. Because... So we are in Philadelphia, we so, must. Then we need to have this. So competitors, you know, the last little thing, and then you can relax. Yes, relax. And, and you're so worth it, I say, yes. my God. Two beautiful days of competition so far. Yeah, and then we will see, as we said, later tonight. Okay, we start the countdown now, everyone. Will you help us? Help us now. 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3 2, 1. one. <laughs> the competition is officially over. Oh my God. This is exciting. It's incredible. I, I just, huh? It's so beautiful to see the, the flags waving from different countries. There's so much love in this room. There's so much support and there is so much talent. And I'm already starting to get nervous. Are you? Yeah, I am. Because now we are waiting for to know who the 10 lucky will be uh. that will be here on the floor competing tomorrow again, being the, amongst the 10 best in the world. Well, you know, to me, they're all winners. Just to be here as is, they is also just to said, get a spot yeah. in this competition yeah. is so impressive. Yeah. And I think we're going to need the help from the audience again because the assistants are coming into the room. They're going to clean up. So we have beautiful spotless pods so you all can look at the design. So please let the assistants come through, give way for both assistants and competitors so we can clear out the room from all beautiful leftover material and flowers. Task five, tomorrow morning, 10.30.
10.30 tomorrow morning is task five. Yeah, be here because it's going to be once again magical. So they will have two hours for that competition tomorrow morning. We cannot wait. We will once again be streaming it for you live on 6abc.com and on YouTube. And it has just been a pleasure so far these past two days to witness this history. Yeah, because we spread the word about floral, flowers and floral design literally all over the world while we're here. Yeah, it's so. just unbelievable. Thank you so Thank much you to everyone. all of us watching. Thank you to all of all of you here on the convention floor, and we. Um Thank you for being here at the Philadelphia Flower Show and the FTD World Cup 2019. See you all tomorrow.